What's up, Wisconsin? Welcome back. Trevor Thomas, John Anderson, Inside Wisconsin. J.A., today's guest, Kurtwood Smith, which means barely anything to anybody. But when we say the words Red Foreman, everybody yeah. lights up. That's kind of been how this is. Kurtwood Smith. I, I fear this, okay? Okay. Uh, and as you, as you often have uh, politely accused me of sometimes taking over the show with certain guests. Given that your history in the world and your only and your your sort of interest in the world begins at 1983, I don't know how you're going to do this with the 70s show. So I feel like as a guy who grew up in the 70s, formative years, right, 75 to 15, mm -hmm. I'm going to be the only person that has any question that that's going to be of interest to this man because luckily you, for you, I don't think are 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 prepared in any way, shape, or form to handle this conversation. Thank God for the 90s doubt. show. Yeah, well, uh, I will prove you wrong with that 90s show that just came out on Netflix because we have both of our childhoods covered then. You, you talked about that 70s show. Do you what? have a slinky? Yes, I have a slinky. Did you ever play with Silly Putty? Yes. Keep going. Did you, I had it all. Uh, did you ever play Pong? I was a little too young for okay, that. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> that was 82. That All right. Kurtwood Smith, today on Inside Wisconsin, you know him from movies and television shows. We know him best here in Wisconsin as the dad on that 70s show and that 90s show. He's a funny dude. Kurtwood Smith on Inside Wisconsin. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, Prevea Health, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. I know that actors don't live in their character outside of, you know, taping the show, but I'm a little concerned how soon I'm going to get a, I'm going to stick a foot in your ass from this guy. That is Kurtwood <laughs> Smith, Red Foreman on that 70s and that 90s show, and the villain in RoboCop and so much more. And most importantly, a Wisconsin native. Kurtwood, thanks for coming on Inside Wisconsin. There we are. Yes, I uh, was born in Wisconsin, a little town called New Lisbon. Um, and where are you guys? So I'm in the Green Bay area, and that's where John's from as well. So you are New Lisbon Southwest, right? Halfway between Toma right. and that area? Exactly, right. Next to Toma, Elroy, um, Camp Douglas, kind of down in that area. Yeah. Do, do you have any strong recollections of, of, of that place? I know you moved to California at a fairly young age. Yeah, I was like 10 years old, but yeah, sure, I have a lot of recollections. I, uh, it's a farming community. The town itself has only got about 1,100 people in it, um, and that I think includes people uh, out of town. Uh, <laughs> my, you know, my mother uh, came from a uh, farming family, they ended up, my, my grandparents moved into New Lisbon from the farm, oh, uh, I think probably right after I was born, sometime around in there. Um, but I had uncles and aunts that had farms, and that's where I spent a good deal of my time, um, out on uh, dairy farms and uh, <laughs> in that area. And it was just a, it was a great way to grow up. It was, it was wonderful. Yeah, that, we agree. We both did that. Not quite on the dairy farms, but definitely Wisconsin boys. So you grow up in Wisconsin until you're 10 years old. And then for some reason, you moved to Southern California, which a little bit different <laughs> than what you were used to. Uh, tell us about that. Boy, talk about a cultural shock. Yes, <laughs> uh, I, I went from, uh, from being in this little town in Wisconsin to all of a sudden I was in uh, Culver City, California, which if you know where that is, that's there are a lot of... Uh, uh, movie places there uh you know this mgm studios was between me and school so every morning i'd walk by the mgm studios and, oh um a lot of that sort of you know and, and the things that are related to movies in the area and but mainly it was just this big huge city and uh it was just kind of uh mind-numbing for a while when I was a kid, I used to get sent down to uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, my, my father was killed in the Second World War. Um, and 
his family was from Shreveport, so I would go down there, which was a much larger city, of course, than uh, Canonical Park. Uh, I mean, than uh, 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 New Lisbon, but uh, uh, not quite as big as uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I want. I want to know if if you could explain to our audience how remarkable it is to be on a show that has two hundred episodes. Like that's it, just from the from the working actor's point of view. It's unbelievable. Um, uh, you know, especially they used to Fox when we were doing a '70s show. Fox would pick us up two seasons at a time, and so the fact that you not only have a job coming up, but you have a job for the next two years. Uh, it's just, uh, it's remarkable. It certainly makes you um, relax and just focus on the work and not have to worry about anything else. Also, sitcoms have, a, have decent hours. They're not like, you know, single camera shows, um, you know, uh, films um, and most of, most of television, with the exception of single cameras, have... Uh, uh, have brutal hours where they start at, start shooting at seven in the morning. They get done when it gets dark. Um, we would go in around ten o'clock and we would go home about four. So, hmm. you know, except for the shoot days, which were on Friday, and then that was a long day. We'd come in at noon and we'd be there till about eleven at night. But one day a week of long hours was really nothing, you know? yeah. especially because you have the audiences there at night, uh, and, and they were such a boost to whatever mm -hmm. show. But obviously, audiences can be fickle, and you don't know what's going to hit and what doesn't. Do. Was there a point when you read some scripts and realized that, that this thing had some staying power? Pretty quickly, I think. Uh, like the first few episodes, the, strip, the scripts just kept coming. And, and they, if they would, I, I always figured if they'd make me laugh, there's a good chance they're going to make the audience laugh as well. And they did, you know, night after night. And, uh, the other thing is about things not working. What we would do is when we were shooting in front of an audience, um, if you go through it once and something doesn't land, they rewrite the joke right there. And then you, you know, you take a second and you, um, you go back and do it again and they have a new joke there. And um, a lot of times it, uh, just the fact that it was a new joke would surprise the audience and we get the reaction we want. So yeah, it could be, uh, but we we just had a talent a bunch of people. So you have this great good fortune of a long run, and then it goes it goes away. How um, your original reaction when they called you back you said, "How about we do the '90s show?" Oh, I was I was all for it right away. It, wait, let me first say I was for it because of the people that were involved. You know, I first heard from Tom Warner. You know, from Carsey Warner, which was the production company that put the show together, the 70s show together in the first place. So Tom and Marcy Carsey were uh, behind this new show, as well as Bonnie and Terry Turner, uh, who were two of the three creators of the original 70s show. And uh, 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 Greg Mettler, who is our showrunner now, he was a writer on that 70s show. So with, I just felt that with all those people, that we had a really good chance of doing something of quality, you know, something good, not just trying mm -hmm. to make it. And uh, I think we really scored, uh, you know, on the first season. Yeah, with that 90s show, it's incredible. I'm six episodes in. I'm oh. trying to, I, I, I binged it a little, like, and then I, I didn't mean to take a break, but I accidentally took a break, and then I binged some more. It's really, really good. And I just read that you have a second season coming already, which can I just tell you I'm grateful for that because I hate it when I get sucked into a show and I really like it, and all of a sudden it friggin' disappears. It pisses me okay. off. Yes, I've had that happen to a couple uh, to me on a couple of shows. Uh, and uh, it can just, you know, it's just sometimes on shows, well, a lot of times, but in particular shows uh, that I liked a lot, it just doesn't go away. You know, I still find myself getting mad at Amazon for not picking up Patriot, you know, or some, uh, uh, you know, I still uh, uh, hold grudges against CBS because of a couple of shows that I was in that didn't get picked up. Uh, <laughs> it's silly, but there it is, you know. Yeah, well, I'm glad it's uh, the same kind of front on your end. I mean, it's a little bit harder when you're working, right? But as a fan, there's been a number of shows where I'm like, damn, this is good. Two seasons in, all of a sudden, yeah, that's not coming back. I'm like, 
Revolution was about to save the world. What do you mean it's not coming back? How the hell do you just stop that? Anyway. Right. All right, we'll keep the conversation going in the second segment here. Kurtwood Smith, we all know him as Red Foreman, clearly, here in the state of Wisconsin, but there's so much more to his career. We'll cover a little bit of that in a second here. We're back in a minute. Inside Wisconsin. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, Prevea Health, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. JA, I went to Festival Foods today. Let's I did eat. the what? Let's eat. Let's eat. Yeah, but well, that's what I was saying. I was geez, <laughs> you scared me. Yeah, always hungry. Hi, not a, not a small fella. Let's eat. All right, went to Festival Foods today for what we call the essentials run. Okay. I want to know what if I said I'm going to the store to Festival Foods to buy the essentials. What are the five essentials that I came home with today? That Go. you came home with? I went and bought the essentials. Yes, I this did. This is for yeah. you. No, this okay. is for the family. This is, right, these but are the I essentials. Your family. Right, because it was me. The only thing that's ever on the list is Pepsi. Um, so, <laughs> Jeez. Um, okay, so I, 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 it's not like I think you're a 19, you know, 30s farmer or a 1960s um, uh family like you know um eddie haskell and and leave it to yeah. beaver but it, we need milk bread yep, that's one bread no nope, bread yep uh, and uh we should have cheese but i don't know that that's an essential cheese is on there yep. Yep. cheese um, is literally on the list that's three okay uh, i'd say eggs but i don't even know if you can make eggs anymore they're like a yeah. hundred billion dollars eggs for, was on the list too yep. those are four four of the essentials almost okay. five five um, might toss you Five might be difficult. Yeah, just I mean, think about the age of my kids. I was and say, what we, do, we, do we need deli meat or I need peanut butter and and jelly? Do I need peanut butter and jelly? Need? That's what yeah. you need: peanut butter and jelly. Yep. Shocker! I try to quiz you on five things yeah. that might be obscure, and you get them. Got all the essentials at Festival Foods during the day today, and did take a trip through the liquor department. The wine my essentials there. are exactly the same as when I was twelve. I need Pepsi. I could use some Lucky Charms, maybe some Pop Tarts. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> what else? What are the other two? Out of curiosity, yeah. ramen noodles. Then no, then we'll get no, then we'll get some uh, um, you know, some. We can still do peanut butter and jelly. The one thing that would be different is I don't think I eat spaghettios anymore. I used to eat Franco American spaghettios oh. with meatballs or the little Franks. Like there was no tomorrow. Like I pretty much at one point when I was really young and much smaller, and I weighed maybe 140 pounds. I'm pretty sure two thirds of my body weight was spaghettios. I don't know about you, but I could eat those suckers cold right out of the can, too. It didn't matter. Well, they have those and all the essentials and so much more. Shopfestfoods.com. Check out a Festival Foods, 40 locations across the state of Wisconsin. Friends of ours, they are friends of yours. Check them out, Festival Foods. In between segments with Kurtwood Smith, time for another top five list here on yep. Inside Wisconsin, presented by Wisconsin's best agriculture program, the University of Wisconsin Platteville. UW Platteville offers an affordable, top rated program. That prepares graduates to be leaders in the fields of agriculture and agribusiness, contributing yeah. to our state's economy and making our economies even stronger, for sure. Find out more at uwplat.edu. I didn't know Kurtwood Smith grew up on a dairy farm. That was kind of cool. Farm kid, right? Yeah. I had no idea. Listen, I'd, ra kid. I'd rather deal with the I, – I don't know that uh, – I, I mean, I'd rather work with the goofy hours of, of Hollywood than I would – the the farm hours yeah those are goofy hours too and right? a, yeah. a little bit yeah, harder mind. now when i you know i tune in and still turn in at two or three that the people god bless you to get up at 4 a.m to milk cows because that is just not my day part in fact i i maybe i told you this i was once asked by uh management when we were starting the morning sports centers what's okay. that 10, 12 years ago that yeah. started and originally we do them at 6 a.m that was when it was going to start instead of seven and they came to me and I'm, now mind you, I'm working overnights and they said, we want to get these launched. It would help to have somebody uh, that is a profile that people have known. That's kind of uh, kind of somebody that is a staple of sports center to kind of be there to maybe be a foundational piece. And I said, okay, well, what's the story there? And they said, well, six, you'd have to come in at like three. And I said, if I had wanted to get up at three and come in at four, I would have stayed in Wisconsin and milked cows and been a dairy. <laughs> so 
Well, I'm not going to. Uh, you- and and a dear man named Mark Gross, who was who was heading up that project, and Grossy still works with us and and does a lot of the remote stuff. But yeah, it, Grossy was kind enough to understand and said, "We're all good." Yeah, got it. <laughs> well, you're high fiving those people on your way out at this point. You're leaving at that time. I can't every, imagine flipping that switch every once in a while. Yeah. All right, so our top five list today talking yeah. about things uh, on TV that are set in Wisconsin. Right. What are the top five television shows that are set here in Wisconsin? And by the way, thinking about this, some come to mind that are just outside of Wisconsin for me, like Family Matters. Remember that show okay. with yep. Steve Urkel? That was yep. in Chicago. Yep. The guys from Home Improvement, that was in the Detroit area. There's a Midwest feel for a lot of sitcoms, but there are at least five the top five sitcoms that yeah. are uh, stationed here in Wisconsin. All right, I, don't number five. All, I don't know if I have all sitcoms. I don't know what if do you, I have what, all sitcoms. Okay. What do you um, got that's not a sitcom? Well, if you're going to not a sitcom is, is Young and the Restless, which is a soap opera. Got it. That's number five. I didn't notice. I don't know the difference between a soap opera and a sitcom. Is there a difference? Are don't tell really? me. Yeah, no, of course there's a difference. Number four, ready? Listen, because I have some, and when you said there are some outside the top five and you said Chicago, I'm like, well, so is ER. I was thinking some outside the top five, like like if we'd have done this 10 years ago, my daughter would have been crazy for Liv and Maddie. Uh, you know, the, 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 I think that's a Disney Channel show, Young yeah. Gals, Liv and Maddie. They were in, they were in uh, Stevens Point huh. or one that won a ton of Emmys, but I just never watched it was Picket Fences. It's kind of an oddball kind of a show. Right. Big famous. But I, I didn't see that. So that's not on my on my list. So I, I'm going to go with uh, Young and the Restless. Yeah. Gen- which, by the way, I don't think that's important. Uh, we would when we were on the road for <laughs> for track meets, half the team, hell, three quarters of the team would pile in in the morning to watch Young and the Restless before we go work out, or before we go practice. Guys from like seven countries all watching to see what's happening in Genoa City right there with Victor Newman with that one. So. <laughs> Um, uh, number four, honestly, this comes at your suggestion. It would not have been in my top five, but since this is an inside Wisconsin top five, I'll give you step by step. Yeah, it's Port Washington, Wisconsin, which does not have a giant roller coaster that they have in their intro. Uh, but that was a, a show that I grew up watching. Uh, Suzanne Summers, I believe, was on that show. Nothing wrong uh, with that. Thigh Master, yeah. Uh, Port Washington, it was kind of cool. That was part of the TGIF lineup. Thank God it's Friday. There you go. Uh, I once, by the way, in my dad's old diesel pickup that I had at college, once drove from Columbia, Missouri to Port Washington on a tank of gas before I had to fill up. What? Little old Toyota diesel pickup or whatever it was and drove a long mile. So number three, uh, and with a a nod to the late Shirley uh, uh, Williams, or excuse me, Laverne and Shirley to the the Cindy Williams who played uh, um, Shirley on there. That was, you know, Shamil Shamazel that worked in the brewery in Milwaukee. What's more Wisconsin than that? True. Well, number two, the 70s, yeah, I right? Say. I think we put 70s and 90s there. I think that might now have uh, eclipsed Laverne and Shirley. Yeah, that 70s show, that 90s show, even though Point Place isn't a place, we confirm whether it's uh, a place right. in southeast Wisconsin or northeast Wisconsin. We'll figure out where Point Place is. No, but Point Place, Wisconsin matters. That 70s show, that 90s show, number two. Nobody will, nobody will forget. And then number one is... It's almost like there's one, and all the rest of these could be tied for second in my book, yeah. is is Happy Days. Happy Days. I mean, there's a bronze Fonz. Yeah, I was going to say, they're, they're literally a bronze Fonz. Right? Yeah. You got Ron Howard, and, and you've got the Cunningham family, and Richie Cunningham, and all and Al's drive, drive-in, and all those. Like, I don't know that there's anything even close to Happy Days. No, that might be of all the top fives we've ever done. That's the number one that everybody, when they said top five, when they're listening, go, well, number one's happy days. Uh, I, I, I think, think that that's one of the few things that you could probably get 99.9% of the people go, yeah, that's probably the most famous show and a sitcom that is <laughs> that takes place in, in the state of Wisconsin. Almost as obvious as Joe Thomas, huh? About that obvious? Honest to God, it is probably something even – if there's something more obvious than Joe Thomas, yes. that would be it. It's the Great. only thing – that might be more uh, more obvious than Joe Tom. Awesome. Happy days. Number one, the top five sitcom slash. What is what, what is it? A soap opera? That's what the difference is? Whatever. Back to Kurtwood Smith with that 70s show, which made number two. 
We are back inside Wisconsin. Trevor Thomas, John Anderson, and Kurtwood Smith, actor, longtime actor. We know him best as Red Foreman here in Wisconsin, which is kind of one of the questions I had for you, Kurtwood. This is a character now in Red Foreman that has seemed to stick with you at this point in your career, clearly from that 70s show and now with the 90s show. Is that difficult when you have conversations with people and go, well, gosh, I was in, I've done a lot more work than just that 70s show or that 90s show. Um, how does that make you feel when you're now kind of glued to this character here in 2023? Well, you know, it's okay, uh, especially because, you you know, you mentioned Robocop to begin with. You know, I'm still, uh, you know, I still get, uh, <clears throat> I still get recognition from, uh, uh, from Robocop, from Clarence, uh, all, all this time later. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a close second to, um, to Red, uh, and especially considering that, you know, that was even longer ago. That was, you know, 1987. So <clears throat> the fact that uh, I have some uh, uh, recognition uh, from that, you know, I don't feel like I'm only recognized for, for Red. And there are other things as well. That's true. That's true. Often they come up to me and they, they say, oh, you know, well, after they say, call me a dumbass. Uh, and, and I say, anybody who wants to be called a dumbass is a dumbass. Uh, <laughs> All right, crossing that off the list. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they usually end up uh, uh, mentioning something else that they'd seen that, uh, that I'd done that I liked. So I always appreciate that. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, listen, I'm still, if, if I had to pick one along the way, I'm still, I, I still don't really like your DA character in True Believer at all. Uh, and I realize <laughs> that there are things, you know, that need to be done to make the justice and criminal system work. But I feel like you totally tried to railroad the kid. Um, <laughs> but listen, 40 years, that's just 40 years kind of TV, film, theater before that. Is there a key beyond, yes, I'm talented? Uh, to having a career that long of steady employment. There's no big gaps in there where you're like, oh, wow, I didn't have a job for a year. Like, what's the key to that kind of long success in a hard business, man? Yeah. I, you know what? I, I try not to think about that too much because, uh, I, you know, you just always feel it's going to go away. I, I've just been fortunate. Um, I think right from the beginning, I didn't try to get – allow myself to get completely nailed like I only play psychotic killers uh, or I only play villains uh, and I'm not interested, you know, or I only do this, I only do that. I, right off the bat, tried to do as many different kinds of things as I could. And, you know, people like to see you do that. Uh, and I'm thinking in particular of Mark Hirschfeld, who was uh, the casting director for that 70s show. He had seen me do some things, and he was convinced that I would be good in comedy. I did a lot of comedy, of course, when I was doing theater, but uh, hadn't really done much here. And he he really went to bat for me uh, on that 70s show because I, I couldn't make the initial auditions. I was in uh, New Orleans. And um, when I got back, they said, oh, you know, by the way, they haven't cast that. And I went in, and then... And I got the role, and then later I found out that he had said, "Hey, don't we, you know? Wait, wait till he gets back." And uh, they did, and it all worked out. You know, so I, I think that casting people uh, look for for ways of using actors differently. Uh, it's it's good for the project, and it's good for the casting director if he, it, it, you know, if he can make the directors and uh, audiences and uh, eventually uh, see actors in different ways. So if, if we kind of, if I kind of follow that along, like you've worked, you've been in the civil war, you've been in outer space, you've been in courtrooms and bedrooms and board. Is there a place or a, a slice there or something that you would still like to do? Oh man. I can't think of anything right off end. You know, you're right there, John. It's just, I have been in, you know, I have played enough different kinds of characters in different situations that now I just you know, kind of go back and you know, find, you know, I'm always looking for new places and new, new kinds of roles. Uh, I think like there was something, but I can't, I can't think of it right now. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of different roles, a lot of different scenes. There is something, though, about how much the business has changed in the time that you've been in it, Kurtwood. 
I went back and watched that scene where RoboCop kind of gives you the business there at the end of that uh, end of that scene, and things don't play out so well. But I noticed the special effects that were back then, right, versus what they are today. How has that gone for your acting career too? And, and how much have you had to adjust just the way you perform? Well, I think that, uh, I mean, as far as effects and all that sort of business, uh, uh, I don't, you know, it's interesting you, you mentioned that because I don't really get involved uh, too often in effects. Um, but you're right about Robocop. So much of that stuff, it was much better for us where they actually had, you know, or whatever it was that we had to deal with. was uh, It was there. We, we, we weren't having to do things in front of a green screen. So, kind of a tough question for me. I, uh, I mean, I, the business has changed a lot in terms of um, the speed in which everything is done. Uh, you sometimes wish that you had more time to work on uh, um, scenes that are coming up. They seem to come up so fast. Now, this uh, not, so doesn't really have anything to do with a 70s show or a 90s show, but um, yeah. Yeah. So, well, uh, it was interesting to see just from a, you talk about effects mm -hmm. standpoint, and, and I, I took a mental note just how much blood RoboCop caused <laughs> uh, Clarence to to have in that moment. It was just insane. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, that and the and the amount of um, the amount of gunshots that went off. <laughs> and stuff, yeah. You know. You, we probably could have won the Vietnam War just with the gunshots. <laughs> that yeah. move, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it it was amazing. I can't remember one time I, I used to know uh, that um, you know that the um, that the effects department had, had mentioned how much blood there was and how much uh, mm -hmm. how many shots and explosions. And so. Yeah. So if, if your wealth of roles is is so broad, what if I try to make this a binary choice? Um, tomorrow you got a script. You want to be the good guy. Or you want to be the bad guy. Usually the bad guy. Because, because they're more fun. You know, you get. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're the good guy, you don't. Maybe you'll get one good line in there at some point. But bad guys are always saying interesting things and are always doing interesting things. They're always trying to find. You know, good guys are good guys. Bad guys, you're always trying to find something new for the villain. I mean. The the writers are initially, and then you're trying to make it work as an actor, um, basically by commitment, you know, and um, um, enjoying what you're doing. If you if you're having a good time playing that character, that you know that that plays. Audiences can can sense that you're enjoying what you're doing, and uh, it's another nice level to uh, any character that you that you build. Have but you ever? Have you ever enjoyed the bad guy too much and go, wait a minute, I, you know, maybe I'm just too good a guy normally that I'm like, wait, I feel like this is suiting me a little more. I'm a little more comfortable with this than I'd like to be. Well, I, yeah, well, what, uh, I think sort of in that vein, uh, I have found myself enjoying whatever bad guy performance I have just to the point where it's like, yeah, I think you want to calm down <laughs> Or you're getting a little silly at this point, you know. Uh, that can happen if you have too much fun. You got you have to temper it with something. So back to that '90s show now. As uh, Wisconsinite, both John and I, as I'm watching that and yourself, clearly, there's a lot of Wisconsin things that are popping up in that show. It's kind of fun. I started making a list. Like there's a Quick Trip Cup early on in in the uh -huh. season that mm -hmm. one of the, the the kids is holding. I'm like, well, we all recognize that. Yeah. Uh, there's a cheese head. There was William Henderson's Jersey early on. There was a, a picture of Lambeau field in like episode five or eight. And it happened to have the atrium on it. And I was like, huh, that didn't happen in the night. Like that was a, a thing, right? So I did, where do you find all the props and do you need us to send you anything? I mean, we can, <laughs> it's all here. Oh, I see. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. I'll let set dressing know. I think a lot of what you're talking about is probably from set dressing uh, as well as props. Uh, you know, things that are handled by actors, those are props. And uh, things that are on the wall and, uh, 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 you know, on the table, those are probably set dressing. 
And, you know, we just happen to have good, good people and they research all that stuff. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give him your, I'll give him your address, uh, in case they, <laughs> if they get stuck, you know, maybe they we got between my office here in studio and John's attic, whatever you could possibly need, I guarantee you we have in this very moment. All right. Okay. We'll take care of you. One man's oh. trash is another man's treasure. Uh, <laughs> since, since we seem to be talking in decades, we've got the 70s and the 90s. Uh, tell me what, what college at Stanford, close to Cal, was like in the 60s. Oh, it was great. I mean, to be in the Bay Area in the 60s, whether you were at Cal or whether you were at Stanford, I mean, <laughs> the thing I used to say is that, you know, People at Stanford let all that business happen at Berkeley because we didn't want to have to clean up after all that. <laughs> and, uh, I was just there for grad school for uh, two years, and uh, it was it was a great time. It was a great Stanford is a great school, and it's a, it was a pleasure to be there. And uh, but I have people from my family that went through Berkeley, and it's always a little problem a couple times a year when uh, uh, various sports things come up, but. Uh, <laughs> It was, uh, and then of course Berkeley and Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, too well, soon. Right now, you're not alone, and people that are going Aaron Rodgers and ah, oh, like <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got large folks, you know, that are that are into those things. Uh, yeah. Is is there a part that you had to be talked into taking that you're like, boy, how did I miss that? That somebody had to prod me to do that job. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, darn. It seems like it was something that wasn't that long ago, and I thought, ah. And then when I did it, it just ended up being great. Uh, oh, well, sort of uh, one of my favorite shows that I did is a show called Patriot that I mentioned earlier. It's on Amazon, two seasons. And uh, it was uh, ended up being a terrific role for me. But there wasn't much in the pilot. I mean, I read the pilot script, and uh, there wasn't much for that character. I mean, he was there. He's kind of an obstacle for the hero, but, you know, it wasn't very, really fleshed out. But the writer, director uh, called me at home and said, listen, I just want you to know that we have big plans for this character. He's not just the way he appears. And when I looked at the rest of the script, I thought, well, this, this guy's really talented. This is a really good script. So if he's telling me that, I'll trust him. And then it turned out to be one of my best experiences uh, as an actor. So, that would be so when you're talking about roles that they have to talk you into now, I kind of go back to Red Foreman and go, was this role natural for you? Or how much of a character did you have to practice or spend time thinking about? Um, or is this just your blood Wisconsin and this makes sense? I think that that's, I think the second, I, uh, I don't remember really thinking a lot about developing them. Like I said, I, I think I kind of leaned on, uh, on my stepdad there in a way I, I, and it's not so much that I was do, doing and you know, people that knew him wouldn't necessarily think, oh, well, that's like him. Uh, it was more what was going on in my head. Uh, you know, when I would say things to Eric, I, I just heard his voice, you know, and I thought, that's right. And whenever I heard his voice, I knew, you know, I was in the head. Head in the right direction. It's always unfortunate that he he passed away like like a month before we did the pilot for uh, seventy show. Hmm. Uh, this is a question, sort of, to the craft of, of what you do. And you talked about if you're a good guy, you might have one good line, and if you have a villain, you might have a couple. But just to the point of you, all of a sudden you you read a script and you're like, I have a great line. Um. How do you approach that, whether it's patience or whatever, so you don't like jump the, every once in a while I write something, I think that's going to be really funny. And I have to remind myself to not get to it too quickly. How, how do you, when you get that line, you know, how do you, uh, what do I want to say? I mean, you feel like it's, it's, it's the old thing, like your golf grip. It's like a dove. You don't want to squeeze it to death. You got to, you know, how do you handle that? Well, you just, patience, patience. Uh, you know, I have uh, the, the first time uh, I called Eric a, a, a dumbass when I said, uh, you know, he was talking about how things this didn't go well for him, that he had bad luck. And I said, this is like the second episode or third episode. And I said, son, you know, it's not, you don't have bad luck. 
things go things don't work out for you because you're a dumbass and i knew that that was going to bring down the house you know uh especially if you know and i thought oh just say the line you know don't try to color it don't try to you know don't get heavy on it just say the words and uh bang man the house came down it was good oh it was good and it's been awesome now in the 90s you carry it forward and you're like kitty all the dumbasses were gone <laughs> yeah. amazing i love that that was fun to do yeah all right we will wrap it up in segment number three in just a bit this has been a blast kurtwood smith on inside wisconsin inside wisconsin is brought to you by american family insurance aaron's company blaine's farm and fleet capital credit union festival foods quick trip miller light north star mohican casino resort prevea health and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. JA, this is a tricky time of year for winter in Wisconsin. Maybe the, right. the Northeast as well, but here, today it was 45. I was out for a walk in the middle sure. of the day. It was beautiful. It's like shorts and t-shirt weather for us this time of year. Tomorrow, four to seven inches of snow. So it's like- Good on you. To, today, maybe a daytime bonfire and a Miller Lite, because it's- feeling like winter's ending, even though right. winter brings people together around Miller Lite. But tomorrow, mm -hmm. full-fledged winter, we're back drinking Miller Lite's inside. I mean, I don't know. It just seems like I want spring. Maybe that's my way of saying, I, can we have spring? I like dude, to drink beer outside again. Dude, we're taping this in the middle of February. You can't have spring yet. You know that. Every once in a while, you get an outlier. It's worse here. We we get minus 7 occasionally. We, we're usually like 30, 32-ish. But every once in a while, we'll get the 60-degree day. Which does you no good because you can't yeah. go out and play golf. It's one day, and is you know. But we have we uh, we manage and uh, listen. My I I don't I, my Miller lightness is not guided by the weather in any way, shape, or form. I That's I don't fair. need I don't have a temp I don't have a temperature range when when that happens. So I do have a couple of them left in the fridge because I had a uh, a championship day party because everybody one I got to work I always have to work Super Bowl Sunday and everybody has Super Bowl parties so. I had mine on championship Sunday because then you get a lot more people and you can go longer and all that. But we, we have a few orphans and uh, I'm just being, I'm just taking care of them best. I orphans. Can. Good. Just take we'll care of them. Them. Give them a good home. All right. So real quick on this whole outdoor, it doesn't need to be winter thing yet. Winter brings us around it. If we land the NFL draft and it's in April here, there mm -hmm. is a chance it can be 75 and beautiful or 33 <laughs> and miserable I just think either way, Miller Lite would make it better. Maybe that's just the way I'm trying to say What if, What yeah. if I told you that I know something about that? Well, I would imagine if you know something about that, you couldn't tell us anything about that or you'd have to kill us. Is that fair? Um, we're in 23? Yeah, we're in 2023 right now. Uh, yeah. Is it 25 or 27? Is that or a them. done deal? Do you... Could be one of those two days. The draft. Would, it, 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 if we sit here in two thousand three, within the next four years, for sure, the draft is coming in Green Bay. That's that, that much I'm sure. Of. Your your sources say. All right, good. Well, there will be Miller Light when that happens. This is uh, a promise mm -hmm. for sure. Good. That's fun. Look at us breaking yeah. news. <clears throat> All right, Miller Light, great taste. Ninety six calories. Go to MillerLight.com slash Inside Wisconsin to find delivery options near you. Or you can pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere they sell beer. It's mm -hmm. Miller time. Uh, I gotta ask, where'd you where'd you find it for the championship party? Well, this is gonna this might blow you away. The liquor store. They sell Miller Lite <laughs> at the liquor store. <laughs> yeah, went in there. Just cases of it everywhere. Amazing. What are cold, they doing? <laughs> not cold. Six pack, eighteen pack, twenty five. <laughs> Like, it's crazy. Like, I'm never going back to the flower shop again to get it. Like, it's just, <laughs> the array is crazy at the liquor oh, store. Oh, that's outstanding. It's unbelievable. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Who knew? A liquor store sells Miller Lite. Who knew? All right, we're back. Segment three, inside Wisconsin, Trevor, John, and Kurtwood Smith. So, a few for me, then it's lightning round with J.A. I've got two. That's a few. Number one, Point Place, Wisconsin doesn't exist, but the zip code that I saw in that 90s show does exist. So I truly think that the cat is out of the bag 
Point Place is in Kenosha County. Is that the truth? Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun to kind of go, well, that's not a real. And then you read, uh, you're reading the Point Place Gazette, which I think turned over from the Post Crescent. Anyway, it's kind of fun to watch. All right, Point Place is in. There have been uh, there have been occasional mentions uh, of Kenosha, so uh, you know maybe they had that in mind. Yeah, well, it works. People are, people are obsessed about that. They are. It's absurd. So this is what's funny is I I actually called in the Fond du Lac Reporter. Quick story: there was a news article back in 2020 where they were actually polling Wisconsin people wondering where Point Place was. And I called the reporter today, and I was like, hey, I'm talking with Kurtwood Smith today. I would like to know if you found Point Place, Wisconsin. And she said, everybody says it's in Kenosha. And I'm like, well, that's what my research told me as well. So thanks for <laughs> confirming that. Hey, speaking of confirming, I'm, I'm hoping you can confirm where Fez is from. Can you, can, can you tell us? Sure. Fez is from. Uh... Knew it. Knew it. <laughs> I pegged that. I told Amanda before we got it. That's where he's from. Oh, Lord. That's where he is. I love it. Thank All you right. for clearing that up. Sure. Glad to do it. All Thanks. right. I get to chime in with my nonsense now. Yeah, it's you. I hope not. Okay. So, Kerwin, I work with I work with athletes all the time, and I find golfers can remember every shot they've ever hit at every tournament, and the guys with them. I don't know if actors are like that, but like, can you remember what you wore as the guy in the laundromat on soap in your first TV credited appearance? I wore a flannel shirt. I believe that was the, the shirt that was, um, um, uh, uh, you know, that he, he ended up accidentally taking away from me. Mm -hmm. so I, and then uh, kind of a, um, like a long underwear type shirt. Yeah, you guys are people are astonishing when it comes to that. Uh, I need your th which of these is the best '70s show? Kojak, Good Times, or the Carol Burnett Show? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but it has to be Carol Burnett. She's just uh, too, too too good and has has influenced our business in, in, in so many ways. Yeah, she yeah, fantastic. All really good shows, but I would go Carol Barnett as well. Uh, you're in LA. What, what what restaurant do I take my wife to there of her 25th anniversary? Who? Oh, how could I not be? Put? There's a new restaurant that I've been going to that I that I like. Um, and it's in uh, Pasadena, and it's uh, called uh, Dos Peso. Uh, okay. Spanish, On Spanish, not not Mexican, Spanish. Okay, very good. I'll get on the uh, the whatever the the round table is or however you do these things. Uh, <laughs> the original Chili Johns is in Green Bay. It closed in 2020. There's still one in Burbank. Have you ever been to Chili Johns in Burbank? No, I haven't. Should I? Yeah, I think you should. should. <laughs> totally. Yes, completely. I know. Uh, right. Yes, I've seen that. Okay. Uh, we talk about you've done work in the theater. You've talked about work uh, in movies on the on on television. Uh, give me the challenge of voice work. I'm sorry, the what? What's the challenge to do voice work when you're just when you're you're narrating things? Oh, what's the challenge? Yeah. Reading the script properly. <laughs> I hear that. A lot of times, uh, yeah, a lot of times they, uh, um, it's easy to garble those lines uh, if you're not careful. Okay. Uh, you've had these big roles, Red, RoboCop. Something. Give me the maybe a lesser known role that people most often ask you about. Oh, Dead Poets Society, uh, which I don't really think is lesser known. I, you know, I just think that's a terrific film, and uh, uh, it was a great pleasure to be a part of it. I played the stern father of the boy who ends up committing suicide. So, you know, it was. Mm -hmm. It was tough. I mean, uh, I, I, as I said, I'm really proud to have been in it. I think it was great, but it, was, it wasn't easy to do, you know, because he was such an unhappy guy. Anyway. So then if we burn the candle at the other end here, and listen, Robin Williams was in there. Give me the funniest person you've worked with. Yeah, Robin undoubtedly was the funniest person I've worked with. Second would be Deborah Jo Rupp. Yeah. Hmm. That's my wife. Yeah, that's Kitty. That's Kitty. Yeah, she's I, she is such a talented woman. Uh, yeah, 
it's a pleasure to work with her. And then finally, and I am not trying to retire you in the least, but I, I, I in my <laughs> own way, may be trying to get out of it. And since I did wipe out, I'm a member of SAG-AFTRA. Can you explain the SAG-AFTRA pension program to me? Because I got a brochure and it makes no sense. No, no. <laughs> No, I have somebody who works for me that has to deal with that. I, you know, I couldn't understand that to begin with. That's their main job is trying to figure out exactly how all that works. Okay. Program as well as health, and, you know. Just... Okay. Can I get that per- Can I get that person's number then? Because I feel like I, I, I'm going to be working forever because I'll never figure it out. I'm like, this oh is what they gosh. do. They just all make right. you work till the grade because they're like, well, nobody will figure this out. We'll just tie them up. It's like going to court. We'll just tie them up and they'll never, this will be fine. Right. We'll all put it in our pockets. So thank God I'm not the only one that's confused by that. <laughs> Kurt, well, this was a blast, man. We're, uh, we're proud to have you from Wisconsin. Oh, thank uh, you. You're making us proud. It's fun to watch. Super awesome that that 90s show is out on Netflix now. Wow. Season two is coming. You probably haven't started taping that yet, right? No, 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 no. We, they, they just picked up the show last Friday. So, you know, they've got to get the writers back together. The writers need a couple of months just to get things started. You know, they pretty much, by the time we start shooting, they have the whole season mapped out. They don't have, they haven't written all the episodes, but they've kind of got the season mapped out, so. They have all that work to do first. But, well, congrats on that success in the in the current, but the, the, the long stretch of success that you've had and the inter- entertainment that you've provided to, to so many people, whether it is being uh, fall down funny, whether it's being just this uh, mean villainous person, whether it's being a uh, cold-blooded DA, any of those things, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard job. And it's a, I can tell, and it's a hard job to do well over – that broad of, of spectrum of characters and it's it's just what a truly uh fun thing to have you here on inside wisconsin thanks so much thank you john thank you very much and trevor thanks cheers yeah thank you John, I asked that question about being tied to a character because yep. as I was talking about having Kurtwood Smith on the show with some family and friends, mm-hmm. their first response was who? And I was like, oh, it's the villain in RoboCop and the dad yep. on that 70s show. And they're like, got it, got it, right? So that's tough, but man, what a phenomenal long, as you mentioned, long career with Kurtwood Smith. But I think some of that too goes to the to uh, as a tribute to the man's talent is that when you can adopt all these characters over four decades or more on, on television and film and be recognizable when you're brought up in another spot because you can then be that chameleon. And he talks about yeah. not being tied to any one thing, but there are some guys that no matter what you, what you, they can never do another thing. Right. And they're Look at the friends cast. Right. I mean, they'll always be them. them so hard to them. They, they, and to some, they've had little successes here and there. I know that. But they're always kind of. Yeah, that's hard to get out from under yeah. um, what happens there. And this guy's got so many things that you go. Oh, yeah. Him. Oh, right. You know, I think that's it. That's it's in a, a, an odd sort of I hope it's not a backhanded comment, but it, it is a testament to how good he is at his job. And that 70s show sitcom, that 90s show sitcom. And your childhood life, a sitcom. Do you have another John Wisconsin for us today? Because let's be real, it's a sitcom. Wow, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't. Uh, that my, in terms of my life being a sitcom, I don't know what <laughs> well, I did. And I don't know that I have any great, um, trying to think of anything I had in, in, in the Green Bay Southwest High School uh, musical performances. That What place um, were you in? What were you in? I was part of uh, Greece, um, just okay. kind of a, a nobody. And then I was in Bring Back Birdie, which was the sequel to Bye Bye Birdie. I was in Bye Bye Birdie. Okay, and then mm-hmm. uh, so I was, I was, I was, I was uh, Albert. I think was the name of the kid who uh, with Bye Bye Birdie. By the way, the lead that played Conrad Birdie in yeah. Bye Bye Birdie, and then is a lesser character in Bring Back Birdie. Uh, dear friend of mine, Dave Cooley, lives out in L.A. right now. So there, yeah, good, good, Dave. And then I was, uh, I was the, um, um, the, the policeman in um, Pirates of Penzance. My senior which, year, I was the which is an operetta. Man. In case you don't know that, uh, you know yeah. it's a Gilbert and Sullivan operetta, uh, which was, you know, um, 
really, it was a really hard piece, but it was great. Um, I can still see uh, Corey Campbell, who helped us with our, our show when we went out and, and went with the Rockers. Yeah. The production farm. She's in yeah. charge of that. That's how that's how we got connected with the production farm was through Corey Campbell. Uh, the other lead, it was so hard. There were two of them was a gal named Tracy Camps. I hope I'm people aren't mad that I'm just dropping their their names. Tracy Camps, who is who then went and uh, she was talented. She was I think she was in kids from Wisconsin. And last I knew and I still think worked in some regard now as a talent evaluator, creator, um on cruise ships she sang on cruise ships oh, for many many years yeah beautiful young lady uh the pirate king of course was rick joshi uh, who act, who went out and studied at uh texas for an undergrad and then uh, is on staff i believe still is one of the great uh clinical children psychologists a psychiatrist uh at stanford on the faculty mm-hmm. there uh mark mako uh no was, what was mark he was the modern general and uh, and the great Carl Taylor, who might be one of the nine funniest people I've ever met in my life. If, in fact, the list only went to one, he'd still be on it. Um, he was he was the uh, he was the lead guy. Why can't I think of that guy's name who was born on leap year and uh, Frederick or whatever? He was he was the lead guy. <laughs> it's a good cast, man. We had we had great, great fun when we did that. That'll so be, I don't a, know if that that'll be a John Wisconsin, but it was it was great fun. And I will tell you this. I'll, I'll drop this tease. So because we were doing the musical and we spent a lot of time when you weren't on your scene or your part of it, you'd go run around the, the great auditorium there at Southwest, really acoustically nice. And you'd go up to where the control room was and the soundboard and the lighting things. And then you'd go back behind the closet in there. And there was a large room. Uh, and in that closet where they had some of the supplies and where we found these great lighting gels. Right. So that you got your bright light. Now we want to make it red or now we want to make it green. Okay. Or now we want to make yeah, it yeah. And uh, with some ingenuity uh-huh. and some of these lighting gels, uh, myself and, and two of the other core idiots or wait, what does mm-hmm. he call them? Dumbasses. Dumbasses. Um, uh, put together what we <laughs> consider perhaps the all time, uh, our all time Mona Lisa of high school pranks. And you're going to save it for another time? Yeah. I knew there was a John Wisconsin in your theater days. I didn't know you were a yeah. singer either. Maybe we'll bust out one of your yeah, songs. It was, it was, yeah. It was those guys who were not involved. Well, Pete was in the pit band. Um, Byron was not, but he is always, he's a lot of the brains behind this stuff. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then I was, you know, I mean, I had, I had my role in it. <laughs> we'll just say that. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's do that. We had a great time. I hope everybody, listen, if you have, I always, when they have big high schools and they, they just keep breaking. They, they refuse to break them up because they want to win at sports. That's usually the core, right? Yeah. They want to have more football. We, we, we want to win more football championships and we're win more basketball championships. And I always think uh, if you break up these big schools, it's not just that you'd have two football teams. You'd have two bands and you'd have two school musicals and two school plays and all those opportunities for everybody. That's not just, you know, okay, you can't dribble or throw about like uh, those things are so, I think, important to kids growing up i think the arts are important and they were so much of the fun that i had growing up being in that um and i did them because my brothers were in them my brother was in camelot i had a brother that was in um uh carousel and and like it was it was it was cool in 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 my house to to do that so um but but we'll save for the next one whatever that will be the high school prank Write that down. Anderson, Freilich, get up here. <laughs> That's going to be great. Awesome. All right. We'll look forward to that. We look forward to all of these, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, or downloading it on the podcast side. We're really grateful. Until next time, for John, I am Trevor, as you were, Wisconsin. See you next time. Remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, Prevea Health, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville.
Shut up and sit down.